Hi, it's Gina here with um, shiny stuff, foil to be precise, and it's um, it's fabulous foil because it's from Pebio, and I wanted to make a little video just to tell you about a um, how to use it, and also to give you some little techniques that we've been playing with, and um, let you primarily see the difference between the two mediums that are going to stick your foil to whatever you want it to stick to from Pebio. Both both called paste, funny enough, but you've got a liquid paste and you've got a pasty paste that comes out of a tube. Now, um, that's what this video is going to be about. It's about how to use these products to stick this fabulous stuff, this shiny, shiny, top quality, doesn't crumble, really reflective foil onto whatever project you're creating, whether it's a home deco project or um, paper crafting project and this is the kind of results this is how it's going to transform whatever you're making um, if you see how, how raised this relief is here it's just simple um, distressing just walnut stain a little bit of used them um, uh, pencil watercolor pencil around the outside but what really makes it pop and really makes it stand out and look special I think is that gold foil there from Pebio so that's just one of the things but um, it's all about really how to use it now before I start showing you how to use the stuff, I thought I'd show you the effects. So you've seen a finished example, but this is more of the, the, the different um, looks you're going to achieve with the product. So what I'm going to do is on each little tag here that we'll put together, um, you'll see this all with the foil, but um, I'm either going to be using this here, which is the paste, which is, comes out of a narrow tube like that. We do not cut the top off this, it's already got a hole in it, as you can see it's already coming out there. Um, don't cut that off, it's really important. There's this foil seal in there which you will have to pierce using the lid but don't snip any off the end, it's already going to hold in just saying, I'll probably say it again many times or whether it's going, it's um, the techniques using the liquid here so what I'm going to be doing is simply this so this raised effect here where you can just freehand write you can, you can outline your stamps, you can do little dotty edges anything you want with the paste we'll call, this was the paste and we'll call that the liquid to keep it easy I'm going to hold it up, that's the paste ok, next one so um, next one is the paste again really simple this one you smear it on with your finger and your finger creates all of these little marks here the fingerprints and then you pop the foil on when it's uh, dry and clear if you're thinking what you're talking about it's all going to become clear short, shortly well not clear foiled actually clear then foiled all right next one this here which is like a sponge technique it is literally sponge but this one's using the liquid okay so it's really simple, just using a kitchen sponge. We'll show you that one. Next one is actually using neither, just to kind of you know throw you off a little bit. This is just using any of your tape liners, your double-sided tape. Um, worth playing around with some stick and spray at the minute. Just watch this space. It's a tag book and it's intended to be added to, and we're adding to it as we speak. Uh, this here, love this effect here, where it looks like really like molten metal. This one achieved with the liquid and also the dots at the bottom you can see where this is all just like little water droplets but of a mercury looking type thing I think that's the liquid as well so liquid so you can see how by using the different mediums that the adhesive mediums you're getting completely different looks here with your foil I think it's taking foil to a much a, a different level a much more kind of um, controlled and sophisticated application I, I think this is fabulous so here's another one this is the um, one of my um, stamps from the rock theme um, the microphone and the swirls and here you can see to get this precise lining around the swirls this has been painted on using the liquid and also on the mic so by using a small brush and the liquid you can paint it on and apply the foil in a really really precise kind of just highlighted manner and um, by the way it's all water soluble, soluble so you just clean your brushes in water anything you're using sponge brushes whatever and water this here love that and if you can get that on the camera that's stamped and that's using the paste this time so that one and um, we'll show you that we'll have a quick little play with that one this here I think this is stunning so if you're kind of on the fence thinking eh, I don't know but, but you're not now this looks amazing this is using the paste and this is actually freehand so if you're good at doodling the old flowers and swirls freehand just yeah you're halfway there if you're not use a stamp stamp it out and then I'll show you that technique and by the time you finish it probably won't look an awful lot like the stamp the stamp's more a guide really this one here stencil so this is one of my stencils um, using the paste so basically just smear the paste through your stencil clean it up let it dry when it dries it goes clear it's white when it's wet and then you pop your foil on and I think that looks fabulous because you've got the dimension 
This one here, I love this effect, stunning. This one is using the paste as well. And this one, you basically smear it onto your card or glass or ceramic. Looks amazing on glass. And when it's dry, you pop the foil on. We're going to definitely show you that. I have one prepared to show you. Now, this last one is using neither because it's actually using embossing powder. Now, if you stamp and emboss with ordinary embossing powder, any colour would work. This happens to be black on black. And then you reheat the line a bit at a time just carefully not too much just enough to to kind of melt the powder again if you pop your foil on and lift it off um you'll it, the for, the embossing powder will grab onto the foil but you've got to be careful because it can get hot so i would say pop a bit of paper on top of the foil as well so that's just a, a little starter like i say it's a tag book and it's intended we have more tags to add to it so keep watching now i'm going to show you how this stuff actually looks and this um, is the first technique i'm going to show you i think it looks really nice it, i think for christmas it looked like um like um, cracked ice or frost on it on it you know on glass or whatever um, and it's really simple really easy and it's using the paste okay the stuff in the tube so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the lid off and you'll see, because of the pressure, it's really warm here today, so it's going to want to kind of bubble out of there. Um, but that's okay, because I'm going to need quite a bit. Now, you think you're using a lot here, but you don't usually use anywhere near that when you're, when you're just um, piping it on through the little holes. So, you know, don't panic, it's all good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start spreading this around, and I'm being quite frugal with it. I don't want to be really, really um, generous with it. Now, this would have done a much bigger piece of card, to be honest. But... Can you see how I'm just spreading it out and I'm using different directions of my finger to kind of create different marks on the card. Being as random as I can, I do that so well. Right, that's fabulous. That's that's where I would leave it. That's all good. It's all cool. That's it. Not exactly rocket science. And then you can see when it's white, like, like just about every acrylic medium I've used, whether it's glue or whether it's paint or a medium, they're white when they're, when they're wet and when they're dry they'll go clear. Now I have one that has dried, I did earlier, and that's this one here. You can see it's, it's well, you can see it's clear because you can see me grubby finger, fingerprints through it and marks on the card, but hopefully you're not going to see that in a minute. So I'm going to take some gold and I'm going to, it's really, really fine. This, this medium works really well with your um, flakes as well. So, you know, um, it's not just for foil, it's, it's absolutely fab for your flakes. So I'm going to pop that in there. Now, how long it takes to dry, people ask how long it takes to dry, it really depends how thick you put it on. If it's thinner, it's going to dry quicker. If it's a warm day, it's going to dry quicker. If it's a humid atmosphere, it's going to dry slower. So really, it's a little bit of trial and error. Um, but you'll also you'll find the liquid dries quicker than the paste. But if you lift that up now, look, see now you've got that really interesting broken kind of texture. Yeah, now that's quite dry. If I'd done that, if I'd put that on sooner, I may, it may have clung on to a little bit more foil. And um, you can go over again to see in case it's see if it's going to grab any more. But usually it's kind of like glitter and glue. Once it's found what it's got, it's fine. But you can see how you've got that distressed. And I think sometimes, you know, um, instead of Miracord, that looks a little bit funkier. Um, yeah, just that's the first really, really easy one to do. So we'll pop that to one side. The next one I want to show you is this one sponging really simple so i've got a piece of card ready to do that with let's use um i'm saying i have i'm changing my mind as we go let's use that one okay so i've got a bit of card let's do it this side okay so now i'm going to take a piece of kitchen sponge like this and i've cut it up and um, I mean, really, how frugal can you get? Seriously, I get about twelve for a pound. You know, I know where to shop, and um, and I cut it in four. Expensive stuff. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling bits out of it. This is always I always do this whenever I'm using um, a bit of sponge like this, which I use a lot for different background techniques and different mediums and paint, aqua tints, all kinds of stuff. You know, diner paints, whatever. Um, this is what I do, just pull bits out of it, you don't want any hard edges and you're kind of trying to make it look like a natural sponge. Then I'm notice I'm not wetting it, normally I wet the sponge when I'm doing this kind of technique, when I'm using a sponge with paints and things because I, I don't want it to look really static, like old fashioned like sponged walls, but in this case I kind of do and if I wet it, it will dilute the medium. So can you see I'm just pouncing and I'm moving it around, very light pressure. If you press down, it'll look less like a sea foam and more like a solid because you'll just be covering the whole background in um, in the medium. And I like to make it a bit irregular. 
make it look like this would be fab for a C scene and it look all kind of like the foam and things. Now that's already starting to dry. Um, if you really you don't want to look after your sponge sponges and like me, you don't want to invest in another one of your twelve for a pound. Um, divided by four you can just clean it in water this is a good chance to just show you look it's water soluble so don't worry if you get it on your you will, you will be getting it on brushes and things so don't worry just clean straight out now that is because it's quite warm is just about if you look at it it's already starting to go clear because I put it on really thin application and um, and it's a liquid so I'm trying to not get my hands sticky we'll use some silver this time pop it on there just rub over if you leave this too long and it's on a porous surface i found i've maybe had to go over it again because it's like anything the first coat kind of seals the card a little bit i'll tell you about that more when we come to doing the um the um liquid metal -y kind of look so can you see it's worked fab though i love that it just looks really broken and kind of distressed kind of like quite sophisticated don't you think very sophisticated for me. Okay, so that's the sponge in, and that's with the liquid. All right, so we'll pop that to one side. I'm seriously got already this whole table is trashed. Right, back to the little tag book. So we've done that, we've done the sponge in. We're, we're not going to do that because that's just tape. Just put some tape on, double sided, and put the foil on. Haha, -ha, now this one got one I prepared earlier. So with this, so what you're going to do. So you're going to take some card, now this has already got some um, colour on it, and you're going to take a brush and your liquid, and you're going to literally, I'm going to try to do it so you can see, I'm looking at my cameraman to see if you can see, he's nodding, um, and you literally are going to catch it on the ed or edge of the, um, of the card and let it run. And if it's not running, just maybe sometimes you can encourage it a little bit. Try to keep, if you want straight runs, try and keep your cards straight. See, I had to kind of correct myself there. And you're going to go, that's, that's, that's it. Now, thing is, this is going to start to dry at the top. There's going to be more liquid at the bottom. When you've got what you want, you're going to lie it flat. Um, but, like I say, you'll have more liquid at the bottom where it's pooled up and this will start to dry. So what I like to do is about, um, and leave it for a minute or two, go back over this top bit again a little bit just to add a little bit more of the liquid, which will make that as sticky as the bottom bit where there's a lot more. Hopefully that makes sense. But it looks really cool when, you, um, when you've done it. Um, you know, the, the recent rock stamps in mine look really good with this because it, it just looks like, um, you know, mercury or um, just, just a little bit of a funkier kind of edge. So now I need a bigger drip there, so I'm just going to put more because it just didn't look too good, just that one there. That can maybe be encouraged. I don't want to get it too contrived and start painting bits. I just want to make it look kind of irregular, so be careful about you know being too um, fussy with it. You want it random. Now, you see where that started to dry? I would just go over and pop a little bit more over it just so that it's got a little bit of a thicker layer. But this is so, I mean, this has gone on and on for ages. There's another technique that I'm going to show you. And I might just show you on this bit of card. No, you know what? I've got another bit here. Right. I might as well show you at the same time. So that's going to dry. I've got one I'm going to show you how to put what it looks like with the foil. The other one is this. I mean, you really? There you go. That's it. I bet you've fallen off your seats with excitement and amazement at that. A pigeon could probably do that. That's it. Right, if you want, but actually there is a little thing to know. If you flick it across, you're going to get like meteorites. If you want little balls of like mercury looking thing, make sure your brush is up, it is right above it and you tap straight down like that. And um, and then when that dries, you're going to pop your foil on. And again, if it's, in a, if it's in a dome, if it's on quite thick, it'll take longer than if you've brushed it on. So we'll pop that to one side. And um, I'm, I've got one of those dribbly ones that I'm going to that I made uh, that earlier to show you. Again, just to show you, look, there's lots of stuff on that brush. Just wash it in water, just in case you think it. Oh, ha, ha, but thing is, it's like it's like any acrylic paint or medium. If you leave it on the brush to dry, you've killed your brush. You can't do anything with it then. It's plasticky, sticky. Well, this will be even worse because you'll get dust and dog hair and cat hair in our house stuck to it. Because um, it'll just stay sticky all the time. That's the point of this glue. We should have said that at the top of the shop, really, shouldn't I? 
it doesn't dry completely it always stays sticky so now because we've used gold before I think I'll use gold again on that one I was looking for the piece of gold I used previously I didn't want that was the other point ah my cameraman just pointed it out there um keep when you when you're using your, your foil don't do it as an object right in the middle use it towards the side and then you've got more kind of unbroken foil to use you know for future projects but also when there's still um you know when you've used bits and there's still bits clinging onto there still use it still keep putting it back on and just moving it around until you've basically cleared all the foil off the back end because you don't want to waste it if you're like me you won't anyway because i hate wasting anything um you know, especially crafty stuff. So I'm gonna rub that on there and then peel it back and oh it's it's you know I'm such a big kid. I'm still just it's just things you do that just you know and you should what's the point doing it if you're not happy when it's done? If it's not bringing you pleasure, why? Okay, what can you say? So I hold that up there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I love that. Really cool, I like that technique. So that's the liquid. So you see how by using the different mediums, and just to mention, I don't know if you've I've said, we've got a couple of Springer Spaniels, and one of them thinks the whole street is hers. She spotted someone. How rude in a street. Now, that little bit, bit where I did the little splatters on there, I don't know if it's dry enough, but you know what? I'll use that bit of older foil just to, uh, not older foil, that foil I've just used just to see. Parts of it will be ready to stick. Yeah, cool. Yeah, woo. Uh -huh. Nice. See? Oh, I just think that's really nothing shines like foil. You know, even I've um, got projects where we've used um gilding wax and even embossing powder, but then foil as well because it's the levels of shine, it's like everything, it's, it's all the textures, it kind of adds to it even more and more interest. Right where we have two in the book. Back to the book. We have next, oh, the microphone. Right, we'll do this really quick, it's really easy. You get, yeah, this is stamped and embossed, like any water based product, which is now the liquid again. If you stamp and emboss and you want the, um, you know, if you're using mica paint, I always emboss the line if I can, because it pushes the paint back um, off the embossed line, because mica, when it sits on a black line, goes crazy with the interference colours and it doesn't look black anymore, it'll sit on the line. Whereas, um, so this being water based right now, the embossing powder will repel the um, the gilding paste. So when you paint it on, even if you paint, if you're not that accurate, it kind of pushes it back to where it needs to be. Now I'm not going to continue with that. That's enough for you to say you would let it dry, and then you're going to put your foil on. But I just think that's really cool because it gives you a nice, um, you know, really um, super shiny. These mics are so reflective, and I just think that works isn't it you need them high chrome that's that's the whole thing about that so right next one Oop, stamping with it right okay so um let, yep background got a background here we have got a background here and i've got <laughs> there's, there's the little springer bless our little cotton socks um here now there's two ways you can do this one way is to use some um cut and dry foam and pop some of the paste on the cut and dry foam and dab it on the other way um just for speed is what i'm going to do and i'm going to splodge some on my mat I should, if you take the top off it's going to be quicker because obviously this is coming out much finer and then i'm going to flatten it out a little bit and i'm going to take my stamp and i'm going to pop it in there and then i'm going to stamp with it now the paste is um even though it's the paste this time, it's going to go on much thinner, so it's going to dry a lot quicker. So, just some random kind of, you know, looks kind of pop arty. This is this is another stamp from my um, rock range. Ah, it looks quite cool. All right, now another thing is when you um, when you're using anything like this on your stamps again, anything acrylic, even if you're not going to clean it straight away, put water on it. I'm not going to bore you by cleaning my stamp, but I'm going to put water on that. And pop it to one side so that um, it's not going to dry my stamp and it's going to clean easier. Um, right, so we can do some more. There's this funky kind of splat kind of one and things, but you know what? I don't think we need to because it's more about showing you the technique, isn't it? We'll pop the silver on there, I think. Now, I'm hoping that part of it is dry enough oh, the there, to show you what it looks like. Oh, and there's the neighbour's dogs too. They're all out. 
such fun. We'll have the cat's meow in, in a minute. Fabulous. So what you'll get is you'll get more of a kind of distressed, broken kind of image, which I think is cool. Can you see in this one here? Yeah. And then we've got one in the corner. Yeah, these are still slightly, if it's still white, it's not quite dry enough because um, you'll just, you know, you're just spreading glue over the surface rather than the glue holding onto the foil. But I just think that is really cool. That could be that's good backing. I like that, just the circles to be honest. It looks very pop art, I think. That's stamping with it. Um, right, okay, and that's again, that's back to the book so you can see the little bursts and using the gold and silver. Oh, we haven't even used any of your colour foil yet because that's the new one we've got. Ah, now this. Ah, now here you go. Right, I'm going to have to show you this one. So, I'm going to get a piece of card like this. Now, you can stamp a flower and literally have loads of nice stamps that would work with this, that work brilliantly with this. And um, if you stamp them out, use even black on black, you'll still see the black ink on a black card because you don't want to see the ink. But what you're going to do is, I'll show you a leaf or a flower. Let's do a leaf. So basically, if you draw a leaf shape or a flower, you don't have to be like, you know, Mrs. Alty or anything. Um, if, you, if you are, that's great. If you're not, then you can still play with this. It's fine. Use the stamp and just outline it. And then... Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Simple as. That's it. Because here's the technique. You get your brush and you then drag the sides in like this. And what you're doing now is you're creating all those veins in that really quite naive looking leaf. See how I'm using the direction, the angle? there to kind of, that's the angle I would think the veins would be in the leaf. So I'm dragging them like this. Now this looks really cool on glass as well. Um, I can just drag that up a little bit. Now anywhere you see this, um, where the um, the white is, that's where the foil is going to stick when it dries. But it literally it does have to dry. So um, that's going to take, say, maybe an hour in this it's warm, you know, maybe an hour or so. Check it after then. I've actually done some and used them four days later with this technique. Um, I was doing some recent shows, TV shows, um, and it was still tacky. So, one I did earlier. Here's one I did earlier. Different look. So imagine this is a stamp. I've stamped on a background, yeah? Just an aqua tint background. And I've coloured it in using my um, aqua blend pencils and a little bit of Dyna paint. And it's dry clear. You can't see it, but it's shiny. You should maybe be able to see it then. We're going to use gold this time, I think, on there. And then what you'll find, this is the wow factor when you pop that on. Just give it a little rub everywhere. The paste as well, which by the paste, I mean the stuff in the tube is also water soluble. So, um, yeah, if you're getting on your, on your brushes, just clean that in water. All right, so let's hope that's cool. It looks like it is because I can see it sticking. And then lift up. Oh, oh, oh no, seriously, my work is done. Oh, the cameraman's nodding, and I have a thumbs up. I'm hoping you see it the way I see it because it looks pretty. That, if you want impact and wow and um, full on bling, pretty much. That's all. That's after that. I'm out. That's that's pretty blingy, and um, really impressive. Really pretty. I had to look at it again. Right. Okay. Back to the book. We have got. Oh, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to demonstrate this one, but that's back to the stencil. So you would just use it as you would a stencil using a, a craft knife or something. Smear it through. This one I am going to demonstrate. Love this. Looks fabulous on glass. So right, what you do is you get your you get your card or your glass or anything you want to cover, and you take your paste and just like we did earlier, you're going to splodge them out. So this is back to the tube and you're going to spread it out. Now if this was a glass I would put some towards the bottom of the glass and drag it up like this so it kind of feeds up to around the um, edge of the glass and just do it half, you know, halfway up. 
if you look on my um, on Facebook page or on uh, Crafters Companion or anywhere like that, you'll see that there's galleries with them. Um, you know what the team have been making and things have been playing with. So for inspiration, now so you spread it on and then you go back to your stamps. So I've got a stamp here, and then you stamp into it and you lift up. And what you're doing, the stamp isn't putting something yet; it's taking something away this time. Can you see? So don't forget to clean your stamps again. Just pop up there for a sec. And then when it's dry, see this is clearly shows what it's like when it's wet and dry. It's white and it's, that's going to dry clear. I did that about an hour ago. Uh, but it's a warm day. And then you're going to put, oh, I think we should put some colour on this. Right, so the colour foils, just want to show you the colour foils. You've got a choice of colours. And keep these in the box. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned that. Um, you get them in a little folder like this. But they also are in the box um, to keep them all nice and tidy and neat and wonderful. I think we shall do red or blue. Ooh, green. Ooh, I don't know. I'm spoiled for choice. Let's do the blue. I don't know why I'm whispering. Okay. And then we'll pop that on there. Let's rub over. And then when you lift up, hopefully, all is good. <gasps> all is good. Yeah? Fabulous. And I think that's it. You've got, um, I think you've got quite a bit of inspiration then. Stuff to play with. But what I love again is foil. And foil, I think, can overpower a cord. It can just, you know, it, it, you've got to be pretty... A strong character to stand up and shine um, shinier than foil but by careful application and, and a choice of how you apply it I think it can it can just look amazing on your project um, cheers for that see you later